This is episode 39 of the Christian Travelers Network. Today, Jody joins us to talk about being called to stay. Welcome to the Christian Travelers Network, where travel stories, community, and scripture combine. Hey Christian Travelers, so glad that you are here today because my friend Jody is with me and we are going to be talking about faith and our faith walk possibly and we'll see where else the Lord takes us. But before we dive into that, I want to once again remind you to check us out on our website at christiantravelers.net. Also, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, We encourage you to share some of your faith and travel experiences and I want to take this moment to encourage you to email Christian Travelers Network at gmail.com with an MP3 submission in response to the questions, What are your travel goals and why? This coming week, I will be mashing those together to form a unique podcast episode, and everyone's responses will be anonymous. So if you submit that to me by the 24th, you could be on our podcast for a very special and unique episode. Hey, Jody, how's it going? Hey, I'm good. (laughs) I'm glad to have you here. (laughs) Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Glad I made it. It's cold today. (laughs) It is very cold. So today I kind of want to talk about faith and where God is leading us in this year, but I think first they should get to know a little bit about you Maybe a little bit about your faith walk and some of your travel experiences? Um, So my travel experiences with faith are the primary reason why I came to faith. Um, One of my biggest experiences was moving to Arkansas. I became homeless and I moved back to the Midwest and have just been trying to find a community to, I don't know, get me going in my faith walk and know where God is leading me and, you know, a lot of whys right now and where and see what God has for me. That's awesome. So going into the new year, have you felt like God has been calling you in any direction or giving you any advice on your faith this year? I think a lot of what God is calling me to this year is to be still and just trust that he knows me and what is good for me. Um, I love travel and have been discouraged and disheartened that God has not given that opportunity to me lately. Um, A lot of my like, you know, God send me is like, okay, I'll send you down the street. (laughs) Um, so I think that's really, you know, just grow stronger in him, um, and know him before going too far out into the world. That can be rather challenging to hear that. How does that make you feel? Frustrated. Um, it, it's definitely like I have my own plans. I, I know where I want to go. I have a huge heart for traveling to Africa, working with orphans, um, and God just hasn't hasn't opened that door right now, but he has led me to create a community where I grew up, and that has been a very hard thing for me to do for most of my life. So although it's not my plan, it has been an extremely healing experience to just go down the street and talk to neighbors I haven't talked to since I was little, um, to serve people that I went to high school with and know that God has a plan for me regardless of how far out into the world I am going. Yes, I think oftentimes when we think of the Great Commission and being told to go, we tend to focus on it being international and far from home and the exciting adventure but being called to just stay and be still that's a challenge (laughs) yes definitely I am definitely a strong believer of 
going, making disciples of all nations, um, baptizing them in the Holy Spirit. But I think there's a reason that God has raised me in a city of struggle and poverty that I don't think I saw a lot of my life growing up. Um, And now serving in that capacity, I do see that struggle. And, you know, God has already done amazing things in this city. And hopefully that, you know, creates that ripple effect of that then those disciples made here can go out and serve all nations. Um, But I think for, for now, at least, it's definitely been put on my heart by God that this is where I serve. How do you know that it is God's voice? How do you discern that? One of the main reasons is because it's absolutely nothing I would decide for myself. (laughs) Um, Like I said, like, it's always been in my mind that, you know, I would go anywhere but here. Even, you know, the next city, the next state, hopefully, you know, across the ocean to Africa, Asia. Um, But I think a lot of it is knowing that God still has me here because he has allowed that community of other people walking in their faith journey um, to surround me and encourage me to remain faithful in my frustration, to just know that that this is healing for me and for the community, that someone who, you know, has grown up in the same area, in the same kinds of struggles, you know, has this hope and this light in God that so many people, unfortunately, in this area are lacking. It's just, it's not my doing at all. (laughs) Um, It still frustrates me, but there's been a great community that God has has built for me of other people also struggling to remain here um, and to remain faithful in God's word. So it's been a great experience. Can you speak more about that community and how, I guess, you would encourage others to find a community or why you think a community is important? Yes, um, especially in you know, this frustration of not being sure what God has next, not being sure how to serve where I am, this community of just amazing, faithful people, first of all, can share in that frustration, um, because none of us know God's plan for us. Um, None of us are you know, have a 10-year plan that God's got to keep for us, but we can meet and talk about those things. And for me, the community has been so helpful and loving in that capacity that even when I'm discouraged, you know, there's people I can just text or call or have coffee with real quick, just like, hey, pray about this. I I have no idea what God's doing here, and I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, and it's just amazing to have those people that are close that, you know, that you can see and talk with. Um, but for me, I have a community also in my family that is further away who, you know, struggle with their faith and come from a very small town, very little opportunity So even the community, um, you know, Facebook, Snapchat, keeping up with them allows me to know, like, what's happening outside of my little corner of the earth, how God is moving them and working through them to know that, like, even with very little opportunity, people who remain faithful in Christ are just creating waves all over the country, all over the world. This community has been difficult for me to build. Um, I'm a pretty, like, stay-at-home, you know, study-my-word-alone kind of person. So my faith has just grown tremendously in having a community to, you know, discuss and to wonder and ponder on 
God's word and God's creation and what he's doing through all of us, it's a totally different level of faith that I have now, having that community and not not being alone in that, you know, worry and, and wonder. Um, I think having that community has definitely made it easier to accept that God is calling me to serve in this area because I do even just a weekly basis know that other people feel that same call that God sees that he can work through each of us in different ways in this same area Um, so it's just been amazing to have that community to lean on and support me through things So going into this year, I challenge a lot of the people that listen to this podcast to consider what is your faith goals, your travel goals, just how God's going to play a part in all of those things. And I was wondering if you had a word or verse that has kind of your direction for this year. I do. I have really been struggling in the last years to have personal relationship with God. So my word for this year is known, to be known. A verse that I keep in mind is 1 Corinthians 8, 2 and 3. Those who think they know something do not yet know as they ought to know, but whoever loves God is known by God. Um, So that just hit home for me when I was just reading my Bible for the day the very beginning of this year, I often struggle with, you know, those plans that I have in my mind, why God isn't following those, why, why I don't have a clear picture of what's next. I have struggled with that community building because I, I have an ego and I need to be right. Mm -hmm. Um, so you know, as amazing as my community has been, it has been difficult for me. So First Corinthians 8 just reminds me, like, I can gain all of the knowledge in the world, but if my knowledge is not helping grow the kingdom of God, what, what does that matter? Um, and if my knowledge impacts God knowing me or me, accepting that he knows me, you know, that knowledge is not helpful in my own walk or in my service in any way. So this might be a bit of an interesting tangent, but earlier today I was looking at James Fowler's stages of faith. I think we often think of stages of development where before you you can like learn and grow first you need to have shelter and food and clothing and there's something kind of similar out there um, and I don't necessarily say that this is like a hundred percent accurate but something similar when it comes to stages of faith and it talks about um, like stage one it's when we learn about good and evil so when we learn what's right and wrong and then we grow into this stage where we begin to reason and begin to think through some of those things on a deeper level and then it moves into um, coherent belief system so often you begin to go this is what I believe in. Oftentimes it mirrors our parents, but um, we have some kind of belief system. Stage four is this responsibility for belief. So rather than just following those around us, we begin to own our faith. And then stage five is being more open to like a paradox and other opposing viewpoints, Um, not necessarily agreeing with them, but being able to understand and listen. And then uh, stage six is having this complete trust where you just know that there is something else out there and it isn't just our responsibility and all of that. And not many people reach that last stage, um, but it's interesting to see how as we surround ourselves with other people and they challenge us in different ways, we kind of slowly progress through those stages. Yes, absolutely. Um, I would say I was definitely in this stage of knowing right from wrong and 
knowing that there are these beliefs that I hold, but having this community around me that is also building their faith has really allowed me to own my own faith and to build on that daily. You know, it's this challenge of people holding me accountable to show up for Bible study, to show up for church. And often in my faith walk, it has been people holding me accountable, but me not having that foundation. So the accountability that other Christians have have placed on me seemed more like guilt tripping to me. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, oh, we missed you at church on Sunday. And I'm just, I just went into this state of mind of like, oh, you're just saying that because I don't go every Sunday. So I'm not as good of a Christian as you are. Um, But this community around me now and knowing my beliefs and my God um, and trusting that that he has placed me here for something bigger than myself, that accountability is much more sincere to me. Um, And it always has been. It was just in my mind that, you know, I'm not good enough. I I, I wasn't even close to a stage six, barely halfway to a stage one in that development. But looking back on my journey now, I was much further along than I wanted to believe or accept. And now having people who who show me things like the stages of faith and the development that we all go through, it's definitely been helpful and in, in getting me closer to that top developmental stage. Yeah. Yeah. So as you consider these things for the new year and maintaining them and keeping them at the focus, what do you see as being the biggest challenge at like keeping that going throughout the year? Oh, so I think the biggest challenge um, in terms of keeping my journey going and what I think God is calling me to um, and just being content where I am is being content where I am. Um, I just think it's my personality, I guess, um, to constantly be seeking adventure. Um, And I still struggle with that adventure could be going, you know, to a supper late at night with friends and just laughing. Um, to me, like, my mind still seeks that adventure of, like, you need to go skydiving in the mountains. Or, you know, you, even in service to God, you need to go to Africa. Um, even in my career now, I serve special needs children um, and at a certain point, that's not adventurous enough. Um, (laughs) So I think for me, it really is just knowing like, God has this for me. Like there is nothing God can't show me his truth and his love through. Um, And just on a daily basis in my work, in my friendships, um, even at home, just knowing that God is placing conversations on my heart, on the people around me to have conversations about him and growing his kingdom to to just be that love where I am. I think I'm, I'm just a rebellious person. So my instinct is like, cool, it's, you know, Friday afternoon, evening. So now I have the weekend to do what I want to do. You know, I did God's work all week. Now it's my turn. And I think that's the challenge that I have always faced is, you know, knowing that God is using me every moment, not just in the ways I think he is. And just accepting that and being ecstatic that he can do things that I don't even know about. You're so awesome. (laughs) Um, So 
Do you have any advice for anyone who's kind of like looking ahead to their year and they they want to stay on track but f- foresee the challenges? Do you have any advice for them? I think my biggest piece of advice for people like me who do struggle um, to keep going throughout the year in their faith journey, um, any resolutions you have, is find that community. Um, find that community of Christ followers who who believe in what Christ can do, but also see your heart for Christ. Um, I think that's the big thing that we go to Bible studies, but don't allow other people to see us. You know, we let them see the polished version. We let them see, you know, our belief in Christ. But I think for me, the biggest thing is you have to let people see you. Um, And that's why being known by God lets other people know you too. Because when God knows your heart, there is no no person that can break down your heart for Christ. That is very profound. (laughs) So um, wrapping this up, I always love to ask people, what has been your biggest God moment in all of your travels? In all of my travels, I think my biggest God moment was honestly going to Walmart a few years ago. Um, You know, I have gone backpacking. I have hiked the Rockies. um, But going to Walmart just was this fear I constantly had of like, who was going to run into me, who was going to see me with my hair undone. And I legitimately would have a panic attack every time I got to the Walmart parking lot. And I would you know, start breathing again and then just drive home and pay someone to do my grocery shopping. And my biggest God moment was a Walmart worker knocking on my car window, giving me another panic attack. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And, you know, I apparently went at the same time every week, the same day, and this little courtesy patrol guy who picked up the cart saw me and was like, you know, you never come inside. Is this something, like, is this suspicious behavior I should be reporting? It's the same time. Um, And I just, I had to tell him, like, I can't get myself to go inside. And he just walked with me to do my grocery shopping. And just that small kindness, even though it was out of his fear as well, (laughs) um, that he would have to report me, it was just, You know, wherever I go, there seems to be somebody who has that just tiny bit of kindness in them to help somebody who's struggling. And I think moments like that is just, that is not humanly possible to, you know, plan to be there for someone like that. That's just God. And all the more reinforcing the reason that God continues to call you to this community and keeps working on you here. Yes. Yes. Um, I have, I have struggled to be a part of this community and knowing that, you know, God has kept me here and brought me closer to him so that maybe I can be the next person who helps someone having a panic attack in the Walmart parking lot. Well, on that note, it has been an honor having you here, Jody. Thank you. It's been good to be here. Yes. Well, that was our fun episode on faith and other random tidbits. But until next time, safe travels and God bless.